Hey everyone, so great to be here. We're here with Nalini to recap 2022 and talk about what's coming in 2023. Nalini, highlights from 2022 from your perspective. So I think we saw AI get much more sophisticated every year we see Google get more sophisticated, but we also saw that Google was paying attention to adding more features on its Google business profile. Um, I think the way that Google understands what people are searching for has gotten a lot more specific. So we're starting to see some stuff with that this year in how we can actually optimize for it. Um, but I, mean, I think that's the biggest thing. Of Last right. Year. As we Lots watched 2022 unfold, we saw proximity. That was a big disruptor, uh, you know, constant looking for better quality content. The irony that 2022 in one respects was the year where Google spent trying to get the level of content raised with 2023 ringing in. It's all about AI content. Everybody's scrambling to look. How can this play in? You know, Google seems to be left out in the cold. You had uh, Microsoft with an early significant investment into the leading AI uh, content creator. What are your thoughts? What? How does this play out in 23? Yeah, so one of the things that we saw a lot in 2022 was that they changed the look and feel of page one multiple times during last summer, right? So we were like, there's something going on. There's new fields and features that you can edit um, as you're searching for something. They're suggesting a lot more. I think this year we are seeing that they have taken all that testing and they're finalizing some new approaches that we're seeing. So one example is rolling out right now, so not everybody's seeing it, is instead of when you type into Google a search and it says, did you mean, and you have that drop down. There's now going to be these little filter buttons that give you topics that you can click on in real time as you're searching, right? So we saw them take all of this information we have, and they're now trying to direct the searcher into what are you actually looking for? They are telling us what we're looking for, which is really crazy, but it's it's coming out this year and it's what's going to be the standard. One of the cool things watching you get excited about this is that, and, and it, a little bit of a victory lap for Nalini. Nalini has been talking about these features within Google business profiles and the fact that they've been playing with all these different pieces and that it's neat that if you know, if you sort of focus on that long enough and sort of tweak what you think may happen next, it's allowed us to stay one step ahead of the curve. Let me ask you, there's a lot of sort of people out there that are sort of like, hey, this GPT chat, you know, take it's exploded, right? Everybody's talking about it. What are your thoughts? Because, you know, knowing that Google's looking for high quality content, knowing that the current library is a year old that this that this AI chat is working off of, how do people process this? You want to be aggressive at the same time, we don't want to be like the link builders back six, seven years ago who got slammed when Google realized, hey, this is bad and they figured out how to tell the difference. How do you balance want to be aggressive with the fact that you sort of don't want to do anything to mess up your relationship with Google? Right, I think it's sticking to the basics of what we've always preached, which is, you know, you've got to find a happy balance of what you're going to do. A lot of people will always find the black hat way to take a new feature and say, I'm going to go do this crazy thing. And if we have time, we'd love to talk about that review thing on LSAs. But right, somebody will find a way to just take advantage and look like an asshole, quite frankly, and then get in trouble. Uh, people will follow suit. I think it's about finding the balance and making sure that you're not keyword spamming in the chat. You're not using it to say this is going to be the only way Google is factoring whether you rank or not but utilizing it in a natural way. Natural, that's what we've always said, right? Make everything look natural and it will work. Awesome, well, why don't we conclude with this? You uh, you know, a lot of talk about different, I'll call them hacks, but they go into black hat. Uh, there's been some talk recently, a cool study that came out about how people are manipulating the Google business profile or the, the, um, the LSA review feature. You wanna talk a little bit about that in conclusion? Yeah, so we have this, I think people have noticed now you can get reviews in LSA specifically as opposed to just on your Google business profile. And so what some have found is that there's not a filter that's stopping you from even having people who have left a review on your Google business profile to also leave a review on LSA. It's allowed, but when we really think about this and when we see how strong Google has gotten on their filters just last year with reviews, obviously if you're getting duplicate reviews, they're gonna come down, right? Don't do it. But we've found people who are gaming the system and essentially they are literally paying. You can buy this as a product. Please don't do it. Don't be crazy. But you can buy a package that will have people call your business through the LSA phone number. 
right? You basically pretend you've signed them up as a client or you've talked to them. You mark it as a case signed or as a person you've worked with in the back end. You have now the ability to get them to leave your review, right? So they're doing this in volume just to get these fake reviews. And it obviously looks insane. They're not real jobs. And Google's gonna have a filter and way to figure that out. And then your whole LSA goes away. Is it worth all those awesome cheap cases? No, <laughs> right? At the end of the day, it's not. Very um, good. So a yeah. so lot of excitement for 2023. Um, I'll give you the last word. What do you think, you know, we, we're talking about AI, we're talking about uh, LSAs, you know, talk to me if you, as you reflect on what you perceive to be the year 2023, what, what are sort of your words of wisdom for people? Yeah, so I really believe that with all this AI, Google is also trying to make SEO more user friendly, that people can do it themselves for their small businesses, right? They have changed the look and feel of the back end of Google Business Profile for you to edit it on the front end, all sorts of things to make it easier for people. But it's still a lot of work that has to be there. And what I have noticed is that Google's giving you more information. Last summer, we saw that there was a new look and feel of the three pack and the page one. But it also, if you clicked the dot, dot, dot button, Google literally said how they were pulling these results in the new look and feel, right? They're giving you the information on a silver platter. And at the end of the day, it is now being much more quick to notice things, to constantly be in the search results, right? As an SEO, to notice it first and to implement it first. So I think that what I am most interested in is that while they're trying to give people this ability to do it themselves, people are not going to, but we are being given a lot more, not so much gray, but black and white, here's how this works and making sure that we're utilizing that as best as we can. Well, making sure when Google says, hey, do this, it's even more important to do it at this point. They're being more clear to us. That's awesome. Well, look, I can't wait for uh, for this year to sort of fully kick off. I feel like NTL is the beginning, and I know you'll see a ton of people uh, at Filevine. Um, Nalini, happy new year, and uh, let's make this a great one. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to it.